that DTV and Slim fight because that fight was crazy. Like, goodness. I'm not gonna lie. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Hey you guys, welcome back to Reviews with E. And if you're new here, my name is Erica. I share reviews on an array of topics, including tours, DIY tutorials, tips and hacks, budgets, and even commentary. So let's go ahead and get into it guys, okay? Now, Baddies Caribbean season nine had us all in a chokehold, okay? To the point where I was like, you know what? I'm leaving Zeus comments and I'm entering the group chat. Okay, <laughs> let's get into it. Now, Now we're on episode 10 now, so I'm not gonna really get into episode nine like that, but I'm not gonna lie. There's a few things about episode nine that had your girl, you know, feeling a little, <laughs> a little uneasy. Okay, number one, let's talk about the whole beef between Asian Doll and Mariah. Like, the fact that Mariah said that Asian doll like was calling dark skinned girls and Africans ugly had me feeling a little bit, you know, <laughs> a little shaky there because, you know, I'm African and I'm beautiful, okay? So, of course, I had to look up the receipts and pretty much see if there was any truth to Mariah's allegations. Check this out. It all started when Asian Doll posted this tweet stating how light-skinned women are more evil towards dark-skinned women than white women are. She also talks about how many light-skinned women are being fake when they post Black Lives Matter posts on social media because they themselves have a history of bullying dark-skinned women. This is where Mariah Lynn decided to get involved in the conversation and say that all women are beautiful no matter their skin color and that we all need to stand together to fight racism and police brutality against black people. How about you stop promoting that fake butt of yours and you promote Black Lives Matter all week. I didn't post no music, no pictures for like a week straight, literally posting Black Lives Matter out here protesting. Oh. Sitting there white as talking about some post Trayvon more and post this post. You would never understand that. Not one of us. I don't give a f black d suck. I don't give a f set you are with our culture. B Mariah Lynn also decided to bring up some of Asian Doll's old tweets where she used to talk down on dark skinned women. Many people in the comments of Mariah's post feel like she shouldn't have responded to Asian Doll because it had nothing to do with her to begin with. People feel like as a white woman, she cannot weigh in on a conversation about colorism and that she also can't speak on behalf of light-skinned people. On the other hand, many people are also calling Asian Doll a hypocrite because she's calling these women fake for posting about Black Lives Matter, but she is supposedly just like them. She came from a colorist background where she used to talk bad about dark-skinned women, but believes in the Black Lives Matter movement now. And I must give this disclaimer, I'm in no way a tea page. We don't do gossip here. We don't do none of that. But, you know, if allegations are made, we do have to look for receipts, you know, before we make any big decisions here. So I believe Asian Doll said that those allegations were false and that those receipts that Mariah had were basically like made up. I guess she was saying that the tweet was fake. Um, Another thing I wanted to point out was that it seems like the argument between Mariah and Asian was actually started because Asian Doll called out light-skinned girls and was like, well, they're hypocrites because a lot of light-skinned girls treat dark-skinned girls a certain way and that's how everything started. But anyway, let's move on. So let's get into how the whole cast ganged up on Bianca. That was crazy. I was not expecting that, okay? I was not expecting that. Number one, a lot of things did not make sense to me. Like Mariah, if you told Bianca not to hop in your fight, then why are you mad that she didn't hop in your fight? And then Biggie, like why are you, I don't know, you were just crying not too long ago i don't think it's your place to be checking anybody for anybody and then sapphire <sighs> sapphire actually has a right to feel how she feels 
But again, I feel like, you know, you're letting people pump you up in the moment to fight her when it seems like you guys have already gotten past that. Anyway, <laughs> episode nine was wild. Let's go ahead and move into episode 10. Okay, so episode 10 starts. Roly has been introduced to the cast. Oh my goodness. The beginning of episode 10 had me rolling, okay? Like literally rolling. I cannot believe little Anna. I don't know if it's me, but it seems like she got a little bit slimmer. But anyway, little old Anna, you know, hopped up out her chair and was ready to go with Roly, okay? She threw a slipper at her and it was on sight. Um, now, did you guys notice how like Taseki was ready to jump in the fight for Anna? That makes perfect sense because number one, like Anna is like way smaller than Roly, and it wouldn't have been a fair fight anyway. So Roly was literally getting pissed off because. Taseki the eater was you know ready to come and get her with this motherfucking lizard here go Taseki getting up like she finna fight for this bitch and honestly I'm getting tired of it like I'm ready honestly because I don't give a fuck at this point and the part that really really made me laugh was Natalie bro did you guys see how Natalie was just like in the middle and she was kind of like laughing at Roly, like she kind of wasn't really picking a side the whole thing was a freaking mess you guys Another thing that I noticed is that House B is now back together with Anna. I feel like the click is back stronger versus when it was just Taseki and Biggie. So that was freaking hilarious. I totally, totally was laughing. And then the end when the three of them were laughing at Roly, that was freaking hilarious, guys. Oh my gosh. Now... A lot of people have been talking about Roly surgery, but me personally, like from what I've seen, I feel like, you know, surgery number one takes time. You don't just get instant results. You, you have to let your body heal and stuff like that. So I think right now, like in present time, uh, Roly does look a lot better with her body healing. But I'm not gonna lie, sis. I don't know why they did you like that or why they let you sit up on that couch like that. But it just, I think it was just the angle was not giving. And I noticed a lot of people were in the comments talking-ish. But, you know, I think Roly looks a lot better right now versus back then. I think she had just had her surgery. Another thing that I wanted to say was that Roly was saying, like, um, she wants to basically clear her name. And I think that's kind of like when she apologized to Biggie also, but she basically was saying that she's not a mean girl and that people pretty much got the wrong perception about her. But in my opinion, I feel like Roly has started acting a little bit more feminine and she's been acting a little bit more pretty because I feel like maybe she feels more pretty now with her surgery and you know the hair done up and you could just tell her demeanor is different. And that's why I feel like a lot of people turned on Roly because she used to be a fan favorite it's because just because like you don't feel confident in your skin and then you're like picking on pretty girls and then you're telling girls that oh you're pretty and effable you know and stuff like that I don't know I just feel like it was a little bit of hate on the good looking girls or the girls who had their bodies you know where she wanted her body to be but I could be wrong. What do I know? Oh, and did you guys peep how um, Biggie was like telling Roly like, oh, you're always talking about how I speak Spanish and stuff like that. And Roly was like, oh, I'm not racist against, you know, Spanish people that her brother-in-law is Spanish. So did y'all peep? Like Roly got a man now. Okay. Like I peep that. <laughs> Which again could be, you know, why she's had a change of heart. Now I must give props when props are due. Taseki and Scotty definitely ate their confessional looks, especially Taseki. I'm loving the Marilyn Monroe look, you know. It was definitely giving. Um, another thing I wanted to point out was when Sapphire was telling Mariah like, oh, Bianca said she wanted to fight you. I think that was after Mariah was like, oh, I feel betrayed by Bianca again. 
I don't know if the Lulu's in the air or what's going on, but like, how did Bianca betray you? I guess they were saying because uh, allegedly Bianca was whispering to Asian, which Natalie clearly said there was no whispering. Um, but I guess Bianca and Asian were like talking behind the scenes. Maybe that's why she may feel betrayed. But then again, Bianca did say she knew Asian first. And I believe Asian and Bianca's baby daddy have some type of relations. I think like they're related or they're close friends or something like that. So, I mean, I don't know. But Asian doll, I guess, kind of threw Bianca under the bus by saying like, oh, yeah, uh, Bianca said Mariah was gonna jump her or whatever so I don't know but Asian you definitely let Bianca down like you know she literally asked you if you had a problem with her still and you said no but then you turn around and fed her to the wolves like <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> cold-blooded Sapphire did clock some tea though because I just feel like at the end of the day DTV was wrong for sneaking Bianca like that but Bianca you should definitely want fade with Diamond also because Diamond literally just hopped in your beef I don't care if Mariah told her to do it or not like it had nothing to do with her so she should definitely be on your hit list for the reunion oh my gosh you guys so let's fast forward to the scene where like um meatball and diamond the body were talking and then anna and biggie joined in everything was going cool and then all of a sudden like meatball just decided to opt out and she was like oh yeah you got beat by tink four times or something like that i think that's when biggie was asking no, Anna was asking DTB like who she got in a fight with and stuff. And then like she like Meatball was ready to tell DTB to score her up over her sister, but I just feel like Meatball, you're you're losing me a little bit cuz I I'm I'm team you, but like I just feel like that was unnecessary. It was uncalled for and I mean Tink can handle her own as we all can see so I just feel like that was unnecessary but I like how Biggie and Anna like you know brought everything down a notch. Speaking of Tink where was Tink this whole episode like literally sis was missing half the whole episode like sis where are you like where are you at? Okay, so let's fast forward to the eviction scene okay because that was like the highlight of the whole episode. Now Jayla I like you, Jayla. I like you, Jayla. But I'm gonna need you to have that same courage and energy that you have with other people on the cast. I feel like you definitely were one of the first people that said Slim should probably go home. She's like not um, a main character. She's not giving main character, you know what I'm saying? Which is fine. But my whole issue is when Slim was going off, and asking who voted her out, it was real quiet. And not just Jayla, but all the girls. Like, why are you guys so quiet? Like, how? if it was someone else, I feel like they would have, like, been ready to go at it, you know? And Meatball, like, when Slim was ready to square up with you, like, you were looking like, ugh. You know, you know, like, I just don't get it. Like, people definitely pick and choose on the cast. And that's one thing I don't like. Um, it's kind of sad that Dia and Slim did kind of get voted off the island, but you know, that's what happens when you're kind of seen as a follower. I mean, Dia and Slim were both seen as Tink's followers, not saying that they were or, or that they are, but that was, you know, the image that they had on the cat. Now, I just want to know, how did Gretchen not get sent home and Dia and Slim got sent home like I would have rather had Slim or Dia stay versus Gretchen that's the part that just doesn't make sense to me like what exactly like who decided to keep Gretchen on the cast I don't have any favorites or anything I'm just simply asking a question because it seemed like no one liked Gretchen on the cast you know what I'm saying? So how did she manage to stay on the cast and Dia and Slim went home? That's that's the part that I don't get. Now, um, I feel like Slim kind of did go real low with trying to fight DTB because obviously DTB doesn't like you. I mean, that's clear and obvious. You know what I'm saying? You you fought DTB already. DTB already fought Dia and Slim and Tink. 
you know, and she already told you guys that she felt like you guys were followers. So to me, it just didn't make any sense for Slim to fight DTP because obviously she's a known op. So does it make sense to fight someone that you're at odds with? It, it just didn't make sense. Your beef should be with the girls that you're cool with who voted you off the island. That's who your beef should be with. And honestly, DTP's vote alone couldn't have sent you home. You know, it would most likely have been Jayla, Scotty, or Roly's opinion that would matter the most, you know, when it comes to who Natalie's gonna send home. Let's get into that DTV and Slim fight because that fight was crazy. Like, goodness. Like, it was a good tumble, a good tussle, a good... <laughs> No, for real, that fight was like, I don't even condone fighting, okay, or bullying or anything like that, but like, I wasn't expecting that. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I was not expecting that. But if I had to choose a winner between the two, I would say DTB took home the medal for sure. Like, no questions asked, like she took home the medal. And I guess Slim did kind of sneak her in a way, I mean, DTB knew that she was trying to call her out, but I feel like she already said she didn't want to fight you, Slim. And again, I just feel like fighting her was like an easy way out because, I mean, I don't know. It just didn't make sense for you to fight her. But yeah, I mean, you did all that and kind of got beat up. So, um, yeah. And then the part where DTB was like fighting with no bra, like DTB, I got to give it to you. Salute. Like, you you don't play no games. You know, I kind of have mixed feelings about DTB because, you know, I don't like the way she kind of sneaked Bianca and certain things DTB does sometimes is like side eye. But I got to give credit when it's due. DTB, you took home the medal on that one, okay? You redeemed yourself and you brought it back. Okay, you brought yourself back with that one. You definitely stood on business and you took home the medal. Now, I definitely don't like how Biggie kept inserting herself in other people's business. I, I don't like that. For somebody who was crying just a couple episodes ago, for somebody who Jayla had like, you know, hysterical crying, I just feel like it's not your place to like be inserting yourself in other people's business. And that's one of the main reasons why whenever something happens to Biggie, I usually don't feel too bad for her because it's kind of like you're always inserting yourself in other people's business, number one, and you're always trying to be a fake bully. You try to fake bully, stun a girl. You try to fake bully whoever you can whenever you get the opportunity, but then when it happens to you, it's like boo-hoo, poor me. I don't like that. Like Dia was trying to give her final words on camera. I don't care if you're a replacement or how you feel about replacements, that moment was not about you. That moment was about Dia, for her to get her final thoughts off her chest. And she was trying to speak up for herself and explain to Natalie why she didn't want to be a replacement. If you're okay with being a replacement, Biggie, that's totally fine. But if someone else feels differently, then allow them to feel differently. Stop making the moment about you. Um, I kind of agree with Taseki about Dia and Slim going out with the people who voted them off the island on their last night. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's the last day in Puerto Rico, so you might as well live it up and make it memorable. Um, but I kind of felt bad for Dia a little bit. And they took Slim straight off the cast. They said no redemption for Slim, it's a wrap. They said that that's it, that's all, that's it. And it's so crazy how like Tink didn't even stand up for Slim, she didn't, try to help Slim. She didn't even try, well, no, 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 take that back, take that back, take that back. Because I think Tink did ask like who voted her out, who voted her out, I think she did. But then when uh, Slim and um, Meatball almost got into it, I think that's when she like stepped back. Um, but yeah, they got voted off the island, y'all. So it's gonna be some more replacements coming in. So this should be real good. Um, yeah so this should be real interesting to see how the girls mix with the new replacements now that i think about it 
they did already choose what replacements that they wanted to stay. We just haven't seen them um, for the last couple of episodes. So this should be good, you know, uh, to see all the girls mixed in with the replacements and see how that vibe goes. On the snippet for the next episode, I see Callie and Gretchen might be getting into it over the N-word. And she's still saying it. And I think she even popped off on Callie. So I'm like, oh my gosh, how did this girl manage to stay on the season? I don't know. Maybe because she's full of drama or whatever storyline. I don't know. But I'm really excited to see how episode 11 is going to go. Um, yeah. I will be tuned in next week at 6 p.m. Eastern time to see episode 11 and yeah we're gonna be back with another review another recap another 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 yeah <laughs> and how do y'all feel about this episode because me personally this episode just got me all over the place you know what i'm saying i feel differently about a lot of the stuff that happened but honestly right now it's kind of hard for me to pick a favorite but i'm really excited to see the next episode so make sure you guys let me know who your favorite baddie is in the comments let me know what y'all think about this episode and yeah, talk to me because I want to hear it all, okay? Period. So I'm going to see y'all next week. And make sure you click that subscribe button because moving forward, we will be doing all the recaps, reactions, and reviews for Baddies Caribbean. Period. So <laughs> I'm going to see y'all next week. I'm your girl E and I'm signing out. Bye. <laughs>